Items in Persona 5 Royal are a useful yet often forgotten set of tools. They can be used to heal, cure, buff, debuff, and even resurrect the dead. But what if you wanted to use those tools to destroy? What if you wanted to only use items and forsake Personas the way God intended? Can you beat Persona 5 Royal using only items? The rules in this one are pretty complex, so listen up. Starting from the end of the final tutorial section, which is the guard fight on April 18th, I can only use items for damage. Second, I will be allowed to fight shadows if I need to grind for materials. Third, DLC personas will be allowed. Fourth, no skills can be used outside of battle. The only way to heal is with items. And finally, this is not an accurate representation of the story. If you're looking for a more truthful, less stupid version of the plot, then I am not the guy for you. The game begins on November 3rd, 2020, as Joker attempts to escape the final voting booth, making sure to rig the election in favor of Insert current president here. Instead of looking for an exit, Joker decides to make one, jumping out of the fifth floor and showing Shiho what it looks like to have a decent landing. But the police were ready, and Joker gets arrested for voter fraud. In the interrogation room, Joker gets injected with enough horse tranquilizer to make a stable unstable, and after he still refuses to cooperate, the police give him the Rodney King. I choose normal difficulty, a decision I'll regret instantly, and name myself after my old college nickname. Gucci man. Allie McBeal shows up to the interrogation room, will anybody even get this reference? Holy shit and demands to know why Joker would even try to get through the impenetrable defense that is the US voting system. But by this point I'm higher than a giraffe at an EDM festival, so instead of telling Psy about voter fraud, I imagine a butterfly and tell a story about how I met a magic cat, gained superpowers, and defeated God. And my therapist after that for some reason. I began my story from the very beginning. I punch a man on the street for being bald, I'm sent to live with my Uncle Vernon, and the only man who can pull off a fedora helps me get enrolled at Charles Xavier School for Persona users with absent fathers. The next day, after eating curry and coffee for breakfast to make sure my breath is extra foul, I try heading to school, but get lost in the subway system for the billionth time. Thankfully, Avril Lavigne's skater boy shows up and offers to guide me. Instead of being a GPS, however, Ryuji ends up being a POS and leads me to this new nightclub where girls under 18 get in for free. But unfortunately for us, we're not girls, so the bouncers capture us and throw us in horny jail. Speaking of horny, turns out that the nightclub owner is none other than Kamoshida, and he sentences us to death for trying to sneak in. Realizing that dying means death, I sell my soul to the devil in exchange for the strength to beat this man's ass and summon my persona. This begins the tutorial stage of the game. Since I haven't even unlocked the ability to craft items, there's no choice but to fight all of these battles regularly. I whack the jack, turn the tables on Kamoshida, and find Morgana, a magic cat whose special power is irritating me to death. He helps us escape the palace, and in the real world, Ryuji and I attempt to figure out what the hell just happened. We learn that the metaverse is really just a new app on iOS 14, head back into the palace, and discover that Kamoshida is beating the volleyball team for losing to Karasuno at the national tournament last year. As we leave the palace to confront Kamoshida in the real world, horny Kamoshida shows up to block our path. And after almost killing Morgana and I, Ryuji decides to quit being a wiener and awakens a persona of his own. We smoke the goats, leave the palace again, and realize that Kamoshida must be stopped before more students get hurt. Shiho couldn't wait that long though, and answers the question, if your friends jumped off of a cliff would you jump too? Way too literally. The gang agrees that Kamoshida needs to be taken out ASAP no Rocky, and heads into the palace to finish him off. Somehow dumbass On finds a way in though, and gets captured, so we end up having to save her instead. She awakens her persona, we shit on the toilet man, and we finally have a full party. With no more awakenings left, we beat the mini boss that teaches you how to guard, and the game can finally begin. The most immediate issue with this run became clear as soon as I started it. 
I don't start with any items. And I don't get to go to Mementos for items until after this palace ends. That means I'll have to farm the enemies in the palace until I have enough materials to craft the items needed to beat Kamoshida. There's no way around this. Just like a street skater, much of this run will be dedicated to the grind. The news gets worse though, because materials aren't guaranteed to drop when fighting enemies. So I need to fight a lot of them in order to get what I need. But I do all I can. I grind for over 5 hours fighting shadow after shadow, fiending for crafting materials more than Donald Duck fiends for ingredients in Kingdom Hearts 3. Once I think I have enough, I leave the palace and begin my crafting crusade. How many items you can craft is completely dependent on how high your proficiency is, and at the beginning, I can only make a couple of items at a time. Knowing I'll need electric items to beat the guards who hold the keys, I make sure to craft a few stun guns as well. I head back into the palace after a few days of crafting, so that I can beat the guards with the keys and make it to the treasure. I avoid encounters with all other enemies in the game to avoid using any items and to maintain proper social distance. The guard captains go down just as easy as I'd hoped. The first one goes down after a stun gun, but because I don't do enough damage with an all out attack, I was forced to use an extra item. Thankfully I leveled up in that fight though, because that gave me the extra damage needed to beat the second guard with just one item. These are the only enemies required to reach the treasure, so after beating them and using the keys to get past the bridge, I find the treasure and get ready to send the calling card. In most runs of Persona 5, you want to get the palace done on day 1. This is so you can maximize your social links and stats without worrying about time. But in this case, I need every single day I can get so that I can craft as many items as possible before the boss fight. I craft every single item I possibly can, squeezing use out of every material like a used up tube of toothpaste, and it's time to take it to Kamokshida. And well, this is the part you were waiting for from the moment you saw how long the video was. Kamoshida has a lot of health, 2500 to be exact. Technically, even more than that. With his Goblet of Fire restoring his health, and Shiho joining in to throw volleyballs, the total amount of damage you need to do in order to win this fight is 4125. In order to do that, I would need to craft 83 items. There is no way possible to get 83 items in the first palace. There just isn't. This isn't like my Joker only Merciless run, where I could have won if I just grinded levels. Grinding levels does nothing for me. Increasing stats, buffing, debuffing, praying, nothing. Nothing works. There's legitimately no way to gain more items or do more damage. Full stop, there is no way to beat Persona 5 Royal using only items. Because I can't remember how I beat Kamoshida, Sai can't do anything to help me. And because she can't do anything to help me, Akechi wins. And Joker, well, he's going to eat delicious pancakes in heaven. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like. And if you want to see more from me, subscribing is the best way to never miss a video. We're getting really close to 50,000 subscribers, so if you do subscribe, I really appreciate it. This will be my last Persona run for a little bit, as I have a couple new games that I want to do challenge runs for, but I hope you guys still stick around. Thanks so much again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.